Hey there you guys, Flaming Guitar 14 here. Oh wow, look how time flies. I looked at the date just now and it seems that it's been 10 years since I started this channel. Crazy how it all goes. So, seeing as it's my 10th year here on YouTube, why don't we delve into how I became a YouTuber, shall we? 10 years ago, I was 14 years old, living in a mid-sized town in Ontario, Canada, hanging with a couple of friends who lived in my court almost every day. I remember the experience very vividly starting my YouTube channel. A friend of mine, Matt, came home for one day with Mortal Kombat with my friend Scott, and we had done this for the longest time. Uh, I don't think I ever won when I played, because, you know, uh, I was just bad. Ugh, whatever. Semantics. So anyways, while they were having a round to themselves, they saw on YouTube that you could make a YouTube channel. And I didn't know what the hell that meant. So I tried to make uh, one for a while because all the names that I wanted were all taken. So when I finally made my channel, it took me a while to upload a video. My first actual video was a long time ago. It was a Metallica video, which was simply an image and a Metallica song because that's what I was into at the time. I first intended the channel to be strictly about my adventures in playing guitar, but you can see slowly kind of fizzled out and was brought onto another separate channel. I then brought to the table something different and that was my love for anime. Anime has been something that I have loved for as long as I can probably remember. My first experience with anime, I remember watching the first episode of Pokemon when it aired in Canada and my god was it awesome. Ever since since then, anime has shaped my childhood without realizing it. I used to love Pokemon a lot. I remember when I was six years old and I used to think I was Ash. I used to introduce myself as Ash Ketchum in conversation and I would sometimes go on little adventures around the house. I specifically remember traveling up the stairs and saying that I had found Team Rocket or something. Anime was a major factor in my life and it helped me a lot when I was sad or when I felt lonely. When I was a kid, I didn't have very many friends. I had like one or two and they weren't around as much because I was the oldest of the bunch and we were in different grades. Matt was two years younger and Scott was one year younger. So it was really tough finding people my age who liked the things that I liked. In middle school in 2007, I found Martin Bellini's Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridged and that's when I knew I wanted to do something like that on YouTube. I was awestruck because he at the time was doing something that made him happy and was done out of pure fun. That's when I knew what I wanted to create a channel for myself and start doing what he was doing. But I never knew what exactly what it took to get started so I kind of pondered and strayed from my path a little because my interests were kind of all over the place. When I started making my YouTube channel I was massively into Naruto as well and someone who had inspired me on YouTube in that fandom was a friend of mine, Psygirl12, who was one of the first, if not the first person to make Naruto chat room videos. So I decided to veer off from doing that a little bit. I made my own little series called Naruto Uncut, wherein I would use Windows Movie Maker to create my own stories. Some of them somewhat mirrored what happened in the actual series before it actually happened, believe it or not. It wasn't until 10th grade that I started to take things a step further with my YouTube channel. That was when I met my friend Evan, or Marduk as you may know him on YouTube. I remember going over to his house one day and we were creating a video about Sonic. He had a microphone in the corner of his desk and I was just kind of wondering what the hell it was for. So he explained it, what it was and it really intrigued me. I asked if we could try to dub a scene from Naruto Shippuden since I was so invested in it and after a lot of begging and pleading we we did it it excited me to know that my voice was going to be in a production let alone just anything it was so awesome that i tried to do my own thing i i, I was trying to find my guitar hero microphone and when i did I recorded myself one day and the first thing that you could ever hear my voice in was a small audio recording of Goku against Vegeta. It was very poorly recorded, it was bad, it just, yeah, I, I, I've, I've long since deleted the, the file, it was, it, it was just awful. After a couple of years, they decided to take my voice acting a little more seriously, so one Christmas, I was gifted a brand new microphone, an M Art microphone. I don't remember the brand, but it, it was really nice and the quality was good for what I was looking for at the time. So I started looking around YouTube with voice acting and seeing what other people were doing. A lot of people were doing 
demo reels. So I thought to myself that doing demo reels each month was the right plan of attack, seeing as I saw so many demos out there. It would assist me in helping to watch my growth as a voice actor. The production was kind of poor uh, in the beginning considering I had no knowledge of audio processing and how to produce it. So further into high school, in my computer technology classes, one of my first actual anime related productions was a parody of Bleach. Watching little Karibo's parodies further inspired me to create more bridge related content, which was the fuel to my next big project, Fairy Tale Abridged. Fairy Tale Abridged was simply just a computer technology project. I wanted to make it because it would show my prowess not only as a voice actor but as an audio and visual editor. I had a lot of ideas in mind for the production and many jokes were trash simply because I just didn't have time. The process of casting was also pretty difficult due to time constraints. I had to on, on top of other subjects create this massive project trying to cast for this particular parody was difficult because I had to recast three different times because of time constraints or failure to respond. So I had to get all the lines in in a week along with the editing of the lip flaps. It was just a nightmare to say the least. I would be coming home around 6 or 7 p.m. which is pretty late for high schoolers but in the end I got a really high mark for it and that was what paid off. It made me think that doing a second episode was also possible. So I tried as best I could to do a second episode but there was a lot of issues regarding casting, editing. I wasn't confident enough as an editor to edit the lip flaps to a moving picture along with the fact that I didn't have a program good enough to do that. So the second episode was eventually scrapped and the idea of having fairy tale abridged was eventually dropped so yeah continuing on from high school i made the decision that i wanted to become a voice actor as my profession seeing as i had such a huge passion in it so i decided that i wanted to go into college for acting but then soon i realized that the school i desired to go to was extremely far away and since i was moving farther away from it it wouldn't be impossible to transit there i went to a college for radio broadcasting known as mohawk college which i did for nearly two years it helped me to be able to do numerous things from speaking in front of a live audience to editing audio. The audio portion came in handy because it helped me create better videos. This is around the time that I started to create fandoms for myself because of the new computer I got. And in January of 2014, I created what is to be my biggest and most known video. Do you want to build a human? This parody is somewhat still talked about within the fandom and I've checked around the internet and done the math and apparently through Facebook sharing and separate music videos, I've amassed a nearly a million views on this parody and I can't believe how amazing that is. I remember when it first came to be, I was in a Skype call with a few voice acting friends and we were just joking about Frozen and how it was overplayed and someone in the chat coined the phrase before I mentioned Full Metal Alchemist for some re weird reason and from there it spawned I, and I can't thank you guys enough for the love that you have given it. it it's it, it's really been humbling to know that you guys love it so much as time had went on I have gained a giant mass of friends through this journey of YouTube it's helped me also figure out what I want to do for the rest of my life and I can't thank it and you enough. I've met so many talented and amazing people and I wouldn't be the same person that I am because of them. They all continue to inspire me even to this day. I may not post as much as my friends or colleagues do, but that's simply because I have perfection issues and yeah. Currently, I'm 24 years old. I'm living in one of the biggest cities in all of Canada, Toronto. I'm now doing small paid voice acting jobs and original projects. And without YouTube and you, the viewers, I don't know where I'd be. 10 years ago, I was just some 14 year old kid with no direction in his life other than a guitar on his back and an adoration for anime. But YouTube has changed my life. So I want to thank you all for being a part of my journey. So for 2017, let's make some history.